So I just finished watching this movie that's been out for a while. I'm a little bit late to the party here, but this movie came out in 1978. It's called Death on the Nile. It's by Agatha Christie. It starred Betty Davis, David Niven, Angela Lansbury, and Peter Ustinov, who played the part as of Perot, the investigator, the famed investigator Poirot. It's a story that's obviously set on the Nile on a steamer in Egypt in the 1920s. It's a story of love, and it's a story of murder. At its core, though, folks, it's a story about the truth and how the truth has a nasty way of surviving all the mayhem, all the destruction. It's a story about a grand distraction because the two people that did the murdering are the last two people that you would have expected to do the murdering. The man was married to a lady and his other lady friend sort of and he connived together to kill his wife so that they could live happily ever after with all the money. But it didn't quite work out that way because the truth has a nasty way of coming to the surface. And I think, folks, that just like in that movie, the, pr the truth will prevail with Donald Trump. The truth is ultimately going to prevail. And I just find it notable that all of the Washington Republicans have rushed to Donald Trump's defense once again in saying that this latest conviction, right, the felony conviction of Donald Trump on all 34 counts is a weaponization of justice. Never mind the fact that Donald Trump sought to affect the outcome of an election in doing what he did. And I say that, folks, because of this. Take a look at this. The timeline on this this whole thing lays it out. And I heard Kevin McCarthy this morning, he, the ex-Speaker of the House, try to say that the public knew that Stormy Daniels and Donald Trump had an affair before the 2016 election, but it's hardly the truth. In fact, remember back on October 7th of 2016, and only one month before the 2016 election, the Access Hollywood tape was released. You know what that's all about. Grab them, grab them by the you-know-what. The next day, on October 8th, David Pecker of the National Enquirer allegedly learned that Stormy Daniels was trying to still sell the story of her alleged 2006 affair with Donald Trump. And then, of course, Michael Cohen went into action, and, and there you have the trial. But had the public known about what Donald Trump did with Stormy Daniels, had they known about that before the 2016 election, we may not be where we are today. In fact, I kind of doubt we'd be where we are today. So to say that we're weaponizing the justice system, folks, I mean, it's a stretch. Because you clearly have a man that time and time again, in this latest example, tried to influence the outcome of an election, and who's to say that he didn't by withholding that information from the American public? And look at all the other things that he's done. Going back to this story here, folks, Associated Press says, here's a look inside Donald Trump's $355 million civil fraud verdict. A judge ordered the former president to fork over $355 million of his fortune plus interest, finding he lied for years about his wealth on financial statements. He used to secure loans and make deals as he built a real estate empire that vaulted him to fame in the presidency. And here's another story, folks, from Politico. This is May 21st. It says lawyers found classified documents in Trump's bedroom four months after Mar-a-Lago search. Here's a man who treated our top secret information, as you can see in this picture of the bathroom, with everything stocked up there, all, all the boxes of top secret information, he treated our national secrets worse than you would treat toilet paper. New York Times reports January 3rd of 2021, Trump in a tape call pressured Georgia official to find the votes to overturn the election. 
overturn the election. And here's the fake Trump fake electors plot. Remember that one? The indictment accused Trump of orchestrating a criminal conspiracy to subvert the 2020 election and identified the fake elector scheme as part of the conspiracy. On August 15th of 2023, Trump and 18 others were indicted in Georgia. This is the one where they wanted Mike Pence, VP Mike Pence, to play along. Clearly he didn't. New York Times again, September 27th of 2020. The headline here is, Long Concealed Records Show Trump's Chronic Losses in Years of Tax Avoidance. Donald J. Trump paid $750 in federal income taxes the year he won the presidency. In his first year in the White House, he paid another $750. Thank you so much, Donald Trump. He had paid no income taxes at all in 10 of the previous 15 years, largely because he had reported losing much more money than he made. So here's a man that has paid less taxes than just about everybody out there that's listening. And folks, you know, it's, I think it's criminal to say that this latest conviction is a further weaponization of the justice system. Even Mike Johnson came out and said as much. And a man who says he's a Christian, I don't doubt that he is. But in lieu of everything else that Donald Trump has done in that last attempt to withhold information in affecting the outcome of the election, that's why the 12 jurors found him guilty. Because he restricted that information from the American public to affect the outcome of the election, and he falsified business records in the process. But folks, despite all of that, I, I just want to play some clips as to how the situation has turned from the extreme to the grave. And I just want to show you this clip. So here is a clip of one of Donald Trump's biggest fans, Laura Loomer, and this is what she said today on TimCast which is a extremely radical conservative podcast. I'm not going to pull an Alex Jones. I stand by everything I said. <laughs> I'm not sorry for anything I said. I truly believe that people, there may be different, uh, different interpretations of what it means to commit treason. I truly believe that the people who engaged in the coup against Donald Trump and have caused you know, civil unrest and chaos in our country for the last seven years uh, through Crossfire Hurricane and also th through these, uh, what I believe are illegal witch hunts against the president of the United States right now, unconstitutional witch hunts against Donald Trump. They are treasonous. They are traitors. They should get see when they are jailed in the next Trump administration. And I'm not going to apologize for what I said. I, you know, was not. So she's clearly calling for the big D penalty folks here for those who cause civil unrest and chaos. What about the January 6 rioters who trashed the Capitol building? What about them? What about them? So you mean to tell me that because Donald Trump is finally being held accountable for the things that he has done because of this accountability you're calling for the big d penalty against all of those who had a part in doing this I, I don't understand what's what's wrong with people folks i really don't and you might wonder okay well she's not a big fan some people might say but she is have a listen to this so this is don jr just today Laura Loomer's turned out to be a warrior for your dad. I, yep, some, you pulled up the screen. I hope she's press secretary when you're, listen, she's, she's a bulldog, man. I, I'll say that. She gets after it. I, you know, I, 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 I'd love to see her press secretary just to watch DC just explode. I mean, it, you know, there's a couple people that you could put in positions like that. You know, we talk about like, you know, Mike Davis as attorney general or, you know, one of the, one of those guys, like, there's, like you almost have to just put them in as interim even just just to send that shot across the bow of the swamp. Be like, you want to play? Uh, you, you, oh, go back. There was a Joan Rivers question. Hold on, because she was the best. Um, right there. 
Um, but you, you, you want to play, and then you can get some, you know, the guys that wouldn't otherwise get affirmed or otherwise. But let, like, Mike Davis, you know, and Cash Patel be, like, interim AGs. Uh, let, let, put Laura Luma as press secretary for just, just, just a couple of days. Just to, you know, these losers in the main, you know, they'll figure out exactly how easy their job is, on, you know, be, before that. And uh, so that, that'd be pretty funny. So, folks, this is the kind of chaos, you know, that we're looking at in a Trump second term. Um, I mean, they know what she's about. They know she said that this is the second time that she said this. So he knows what she's like. And I mean, it's sickening that, um, you know, amongst all of this, folks, the grand distraction is that we're weaponizing the justice system. And it's that's not where it ends, folks. Have a look at this. So here's a picture of Donald Trump with Laura Loomer. So he knows about her. He knows full well what she's like. And here's what he said today, folks. So I want to play this for you. And I'm not saying that they want to do what she called for, but to do something like that, you'd have to get people out of the way in the military to kind of make things like that happen and other things that you want to do. And how would that happen? Listen to this. Are you going to fire those generals? The, the woke generals at the top? Because people have been talking yes, about Yes, I would get rid of them, yeah. But see, hmm. now I know them. I didn't know them before. I, you know, yeah. I came in. What yeah. do I know? I was a New York real estate person. But no, I'd fire them. I would fire them. You can't have woke military. So, folks, I mean, this is, this is weird, radical, extreme stuff. And it, it's, it, it's seemingly going in a direction that we've never gone in the United States since our inception. It's, it's starting to look more like an autocracy to me. And not only that, folks, but you have people like this. Here is a sheriff just today that came out and said this. A sheriff. I think it's time we put a felon in the White House. Really? Trump 2024, baby. Let's save this country and make America great again. So, folks, that is another part of the grand distraction is this is all done under the ruse of them being patriots and wanting to make America great again. But like I said before, folks, just never mind the grand distraction. The truth has a nasty way of coming to the surface. And it will.